chapter two. Here is my routine after school is over. First, I get off the bus and drive my backpack two blocks down the street to my house, which is located at 2505 Apple Blossom Road. The whole time I'm dragging my backpack, I'm thinking about what a dumb name Apple Blossom Road is. Since not only are there no apple trees on my street, there are no other trees with blossoms either. In fact, there are only seven trees on my street and they are all oak trees. The next street after my street is Cherry Tree Lane. I guess how many cherry trees there are. I have no idea who thinks up this stuff. After I finally get home, I open my front door and tiptoe to the kitchen in case my sister Margaret, who is two, is taking a nap. The last thing I want to do is to wake up Margaret, whose favorite game is trying to fit her doll clothes over my head. In case you were wondering, this is a very annoying game. If it were up to me, I would go straight to my room the second I got home. My room is very comfortable. There are clothes everywhere, which gives it the lived in look. I keep snacks in my underwear drawer and my top desk drawer, usually gram stick packs, snack sized potato chip bags, and chocolate pudding cups. My complete set of the Mysteries of Planet Zindar series is piled up next to my bed. So entertainment is not a problem. In fact, I'm pretty sure if everyone else on the planet except me got sucked into a black hole, I could stay in my room and be fine for at least four months. But I am not allowed to go straight to my room. There is a list of rules and regulations posted on our refrigerator and under after school in the number one spot is check-in. So when I get home, I go to the kitchen where I come face to face with the worst part of my day. Her name is Sarah Fortemeyer. She is the babysitter from outer space. Now, you would think, me being a scientist and everything, that I would like a space alien for a babysitter. Only Sarah Fortemeyer is not the good kind of space alien, the kind who could tell you interesting facts about life on Mars or who could give you lessons in advanced space alien laser beam technology. No, she is a teenage girl space alien from the planet of really pink stuff. Hey, Mackie Mac, she said the minute I walked into the kitchen today, the same way she does every day. Are you ready for your snacky snack? I sighed. As a rule, I do not like sentences that rhyme, especially when Sarah Fortemeyer says them. Sarah got up from the kitchen table and began waving her fingers in the air. For a second, I thought Sorry. she was... For a second, I was... I thought she was trying to put some teenage girl space alien spell on me. But then I noticed the bottles of nail polish on the table. What do you think? Sarah said, coming closer, her fingers still fluttering around. Today, I did three different colors. Ravishing raspberry, simply summer strawberry, and green day green. No comment, I said. I am a scientist. I do not have opinions on fingernail polish. Margaret really likes the green day green, so I put some on her toes, Sarah said, walking over to the refrigerator. You don't think your mom will mind, do you? My mom would probably throw a fit the size of Mount Vesuvius. She is not one of those go-with-the-flow kinds of moms you sometimes see on TV. Moms who just sort of roll their eyes and laugh when their kids do some crazy stunt like pour hair dye on the dog's fur or draw pictures of pterodactyls on the living room wall with permanent ink markers. My mom is a much more irritated mom than that. I am sad to say, though, that she is under the spell of Sarah Fortemeyer and will not fire her even if she did paint Margaret's toenails mucus green. This is because Sarah has her driver's license, always picks up Margaret from daycare at exactly $2.45 and only charges $5 an hour. For $5 an hour, my mother has learned to live with things like green nail polish on Margaret's toes. Sarah pulled a cup of strawberry yogurt from the fridge. How about some yogurt for a snack? It's nutritious and delicious. You forgot that I'm allergic to yogurt. I said, 
I would die from anaphylactic shock if that container even touched my skin. Your mom says you're allergic to nuts and cats, and that's all, Sarah said. My mom doesn't know all there is to know about me and my immune system, I said. Besides, I'm not hungry. I'm going to go and do my homework. That is rule number two on the after school list. Homework first, which doesn't really make sense since it's the second thing on the list. But when I pointed out the fact to my mom, she got her Mount Vesuvius look on her face and I decided maybe I shouldn't expect everyone to think in the same logical, rational way that me and my fellow scientists do. By the way, I tidied up your room for you. Sarah called as I went up the stairs. Your mom said she'd pay me 10 extra dollars if I did. And there's this really cute fuchsia scarf that I saw at Dillard's, so I need the money. I sprinted upstairs. Sometimes Sarah acted like I was a fellow teenage girl space alien who was just dying to talk about clothes and makeup. If I didn't lock myself in my room, she'd go on and on about a bunch of girl stuff that would make me feel like I had cooties just by listening to it. It was information I didn't want anywhere near my brain. As I opened my door, I closed my eyes, preparing myself for whatever was inside. With Sarah, you get one of two kinds of room cleanings. Either you get the vacuum dust, make the bed kind of cleaning, or you get the teenage girl space alien decides to redecorate your room cleaning. The second kind is the one you really want to avoid. Fortunately, Sarah was not in a redecorating mood today, so mostly my room looked the same, only not so full of crumbs. And even I had to admit, it was nice to have a little clear space on my desk so I could dump out all my books from my backpack and not automatically lose them in a big pile of clutter. A piece of paper followed by books out of my pack. Ben. Most people communicate through email or instant messages or even the phone. But Ben communicates through comics. Once he draws himself. Ben is a genius artist. That's the only thing he's a genius at, but it makes up for all the rest of the stuff. I unfolded the paper flat on my desk and read Ben's comic strip. In the first panel, there was a picture of him sitting on his couch in front of the TV. A thought bubble said, I'm bored. He certainly did look bored. In the second panel, there was Ben again. Only now, a bunch of light bulbs were going off all around his head. In the third panel, he was thinking, I'll run for class president. And in the last panel, he was holding up a picture of me. But who will be my campaign manager? I scrunched up the paper and threw it in the trash can. Ever since I'd known Ben, he had a bunch of really bad ideas. But running for class president had to be the worst. Here are the reasons. One, to be elected class president, you either have to be someone like Stacey Windham who is the right combination of mean and every once in a while nice so that all the girls want to be her friend. Or you have to be someone like Chester Oliphant, who is funny and pretty much everyone's favorite person in the class. To be an annoying artist, artistic genius like Ben is not going to win you any votes. Two, Ben would be a terrible president he is unorganized and is always seeing stuff that makes people mad. And he doesn't care about anything like school spirit or making the cafeteria ladies serve pizza every, fri every day instead of just on Fridays. All Ben cares about is drawing comic books. Three, I don't have time to be a campaign manager. And if Ben really wants to run for class president, he's going to need a campaign manager. But I have already dedicated my life to ridding Woodbrook Elementary School of mold. This does not leave any room for politics. That reminded me. I opened my door and yelled down the stairs. Hey, Sarah, you didn't clean out the refrigerator today too, did you? Yeah, I did, Sarah yelled back. Your mom paid me 20 extra bucks to do that, which I really need because I slammed my door shut. This was a real setback. Our refrigerator is one of the best sources of mold in the Western world. I guess I would have to go over to Ben's. 
Because if our refrigerator was the best source of mold, his bathroom shower was the second best. I could go over there, run some preliminary tests with different household cleaners, and start taking notes. And while I was there, I would convince Ben that he'd win the Miss America contest before he'd win the class president election, and he'd win by a lot more votes, too. <laughs> 